let's keep working on some Go malware. So on the last video, I showed how we are going to be using weight groups and um, concurrency, Go routines, things like that within malware. Um, in this video, I thought it would be really fun if we just tossed all of that aside real quick and actually worked on some like more malicious stuff. Um, so I've started and stopped a couple of different malware series, and most of the time I start at the registry. Um, the registry is a wealth of very easily accessible information about system, um, a Windows system, obviously, um, because it's basically a database containing all kinds of interesting information about the system that you're infecting or trying to infect. Um, so before we hop into the code, let's hop over to my lab, um, if it will let me. So I'm using RDP for my lab, um, so it's kind of ugly looking, but it does in fact work. Um, if we hop over to RegEdit, this is just the registry editing software that comes on every piece of you know Windows operating system. Um, and you can use it to actually just browse through um, the registry. So here we're looking at the HKey current user. That's where a lot of interesting information is. Um, HKey local machine is also a, another interesting place that you can check. Um, basically, the way that you can think of this is just all the registry is is a nested database. It's a database of information pertaining to different programs. Programs can write to registry keys to kind of hold constant data about, um, you know, like where things are installed. Um, so if we look over here, for example, in software, there's some really boring stuff in here. Um, we look in Mozilla, Firefox, and then let's look in installer. Um, looks like it's just got some Booleans did register default browser agent. Um, so I guess this is probably saying whether or not Mozilla Firefox is the um, default browser. And then is pin, pin the taskbar. So again, really boring stuff, but you can also find interesting and useful information in there, um, such as if we look in volatile environment, we can pop this open and we can see our username. Um, we've got the user profile, so that's where the user-like folder is actually sitting, and we've got the user domain. So just right off the rip, just in one location, we've got a bunch of interesting and useful data here. Um, so reading from the registry is actually a pretty good first step if you're writing a piece of malware to kind of get a lay of the land. Um, I In this video, we're going to cover two different registry keys, um, or I guess technically three different registry keys. Um, so let's go hop over to the code real quick. Now, Golang has a default um, Windows library. So if we go over to windowsmal.go, I'll go over kind of the architecture behind this here in a bit. Um, so they've got the Windows registry uh, library that you can, or package that you can reference, and that allows you to open keys, write to keys, read from keys, things like that. Um, the way that I like to lay out Golang malware projects is, or really just Golang projects in general, is anytime there is a subset of kind of like functionality, I separate that out into its own project. So the Windows underscore mal folder is going to be where all of my malicious stuff pertaining to the Windows operating system or the Windows API is going to sit. Um, so that's where I'm going to put all of that. Um, I'll have constants up here at the top. So that's just the username location. I probably need to change that, um, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but yeah, this is where I'm going to actually read from the registry. So if we pop back over to main real quick, um, you can kind of see the way that this is flowing. So first I'm pulling the username, that's just off the replic, a, a useful piece of information. I'm getting the domain um, of the PC that I'm running on, um, or the I, I guess this, the uh, uh, victim that I'm running on, it doesn't necessarily have to be a PC. Um, and then we are getting the software listing, and I'll explain that here in a second. So let's go back over to Windows Mail. The get username from registry is like the easiest possible small piece of reading from the registry that you can get. Um, so we are opening a registry key, which the way these are kind of laid out is you'll have something like, so let me make this a comment, HKCU or HKEY current user. And then you'll have a location and then you might have a location and then eventually you'll get to like an end key. 
And that's why I was saying earlier that they're kind of like nested because all of these might have their own values associated with them and they also might have sub keys. Um, so if we look here, we've got H key current user, which is the root registry key. Then we've got the username location, which is the volatile environment. And then we've got the actual like registry, like the ends registry key. So that would be username here. So if we look back over at our victim, let's see, pop this open somewhere. I've got way too much shit open down here. Um, so if we pop this open, we've got H key current user as the root, then we've got volatile environment, and then the key within here that we're interested in is username. So uh, we're not gonna run it yet. If we pop down here, not here, I'm looking for NeoVim. Um, so if we pop over here, we are opening the root registry key, and then we are reading from the username registry key, um, which is a sub key of that root. So that is fairly simple. The domain is pretty much the same. Um, we're just pulling from a different key. So if we look over here again, instead of the username key, we are going to open the user domain key right here. So that's what we'll be opening there. Still don't want to do that. Um, and then the get software listing is slightly different. We're opening up the H key current user. Instead, we're, uh, instead of username location, we're opening up software. And then instead of reading like a, you know, like a constant from there, we're going to be reading the sub key names because what we're interested in, if we pop back over to our victim here, um, what we're interested in is a listing of the sub keys. And what that listing is going to give us is app data low, classes, clients, that's super interesting, Glavsoft, Google, Microsoft, Mozilla, and then we see type VNC because that's what I'm using for my RDP. Um, in a real victim environment, you're going to see lots of other software installed here. And that can give you a feeling for what this machine is doing, what's on the machine and what we might be able to steal from it. Um, so that's that's a super useful piece of information. And what we have to do here first is we have to get a stat, um, which basically is going to tell us how many sub keys there are, because this Windows API call requires a constant number that we're going to read from here in order to get a list of the names. So all we're returning here, as you can see in the return variables, is a list of strings. Now, you're probably thinking, shut the hell up and show us how it works. It is going to be very boring. I've got a build script here just because I got tired of typing this in. All I'm doing here is cross compiling from Mac OS, which is my host system, over to a 64 bit Windows system, um, which is my victim VM here. So if we run build.sh, building it, it's built. Um, I, in my test environments, I like to keep a Python HTTP server open in my like dev kind of box, so in my dev folder. Um, so this is running constantly. All I've got to do is pop back over here. Let's see if I can find the window again. Um, pop, pop back over here, I've got a command prompt to open, um, and we are going to curl it on my local network, output it to Dookie Stealer, because why not? And we can run it. So as you can see, we've got the correct username, which is just malware because this is my malware testing machine. We've got the user dona domain, which is just the name of the victim system itself. And then we've got a listing of all of the software in the registry. So again, this is all wicked simple, but it can add a ton of value. We're going to be looking at other registry keys in the future that we're going to pull from. We're also going to be writing to registry. That's a really quick and easy like way to, um, Establish persistence. You can, you know, go ahead and add yourself as a start at runtime um, program. And uh, yeah, there's lots of really interesting and neat stuff that you can do just with the registry without ever even touching the file system, anything like that. Um, so we will get there. But for now, that is a good intro. Take it easy. Peace.